curious. Desperate? Bewildered. A bit tearful. Wisdom. Questioning look. Angry. Proud. Desperate. Troubled. Focused. Trauma. Smiling. Optimistic person. Curious. Hopeful. Pensive. Suspicious. Curious. Adventurous. Explorer. Colonial master. Looking really like into the future from the past. This is someone who seems to be out of her natural environment and she's on shore. What's all this for? You know, all this picture taking and gathering of information. It's like two worlds colliding. He's an Eze. You can just see the royalty in him. So he's, he seems to also kind of being in, in, in a kind of interrogational space, like he also is asking a question of the other person. Something that portrays the beauty of the African personality, you know, um, a, a, a clear representation of its dignity. There's somebody who is very comfortable in, in you know, in who, you know, um, he represents. Yeah, he's he's either going through some kind of rites of passage, he looks like he's a young warrior in training, or possibly he's from a royal family of some sorts. He, he definitely has some status um, uh, because of the nature of the scarification. Those marks, particularly from my place or from among the Igbo people, uh, we have scarification um, in the past. And Ichi marks are not easy to get, and not everybody has them. I just see... It just looks like a statue. It looks like an object that could be in a museum. Someone who's, who serves someone that maybe has some authority or has some influence or is a priest or maybe a local chief. She looks as though she's somebody important. Wow. Even though I see a, a kind of a smile, I kind of want to cry when I see this photo. I'm thinking that she looks like, I don't know how to, what a mother looks like, but she looks very motherly. Looks like she's got a lot of responsibilities. Okay, her face in it, in of itself doesn't look sad, but her eyes look very sad. Not because of what she's doing or where she is, but like something ages ago, like there's a long, 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 deep sadness. She's really weary, she's tired, she's fed up, she's resisting in some way because I believe that she knows there are certain expectations of her in terms of being photographed and I believe that in her own way she's not playing ball, she's not complying and if this is one of the ways that she can resist she's showing some degree of defiance even in her weariness. What she feels seems very natural, even though the position of the curtain and everything seems very, very staged. But it's almost like she's succumbed to the staging of whatever it is she's supposed to perform in this moment. I think she's just like, just get on with it. I can't be bothered. Oh, it's, <laughs> it's not going to help me in any way. <laughs> so just do what you want to do. It feels homely, There's something about this picture that makes me feel very familiar. Yeah, 
This could be one of my ancestors, maybe. Maybe it is, I don't know. To me, it's sort of this sort of white whiteness around her, so it looks like she's in the clouds, but it looks like a very celestial, heavenly image, which makes me think that she's some kind of spiritual woman, healer, some kind of um, what I call a seer, a clairvoyant woman, but a wise woman who perhaps people consult on a lot of things. That's one of the, the, the more powerful images uh, that compels you to think about, you know, the elders of those times um, seeing what was unfolding, you know, before them, knowing what uh, uh, they were bringing from the past, uh, but also uh, very, very concerned uh, and, and obviously worried about what the future would hold, you know, from those particular times. It feels like a very quick captured moment rather than, it doesn't have any energy for me, it doesn't feel alive. The image is, is quite striking because of her hairstyle, um, which is quite interesting. It's very well done. I could I could do that hairstyle today. The 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 aesthetics of the fashion of those times, the hairstyle is amazing. Um, a lot of this has been lost now. from a rich background, young, from, from a rich background, because I would teach the teeth sharpening costs a lot in those days, so he's, and for someone so young to have it, probably from a rich family. And just, just stunning, yeah, I'm just, just kind of blown away, really. It makes me smile, it makes me want to meet this person. I mean, the smile just shows that Whatever the circumstances were, you know, they were determined to kind of work out a better future. That just makes me want to smile. Um, it's very bright. It's uh, very, it's very peaceful, um, very alluring. That's a young girl, young, happy person. I think this is one of the most powerful images where that smile just, you know, I think that as, as horrible as it all looks, as traumatizing as it all looks now, we shall overcome. And this is the new generation, you know, of those times, you know, who are again, you know, experiencing what is going on. But I think there is a certain uh, powerful, conviction here in that smile that we shall overcome we shall overstand we shall overcome you know and 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 to 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 get this from a young person of those times should be telling young people particularly of today very very powerful things <laughs> I'm wondering how she feels about being photographed bare-breasted. I'm not sure. I can't tell from her expression whether she's happy or unhappy, but certainly she knows that she's being gazed at. This guy looks like, I don't know, the extra in like every slave movie that's ever been made. It is like the archetype of tragedy, despair, and horrific histories. Who do I think he is? I, I think he's serving someone. He's been told to do something, and he's just complying, but he's not quite sure why. The number as well, 755, I wonder why he's holding one. Number 
Well, the numbers is what you give to items and objects. It does seem odd to put a number above the top of a person. Uh, maybe the subjects that the, the photographer has covered, and that is the 1,424th person being photographed. I don't think it's about the, the number of people. I, I think it's just the number of photographs they've taken. This whole idea of a number, uh, you know, to an African by a colonial uh, mandated person, you know, makes these people look more, you know, vivid like captives you know, of, of colonialism who are numbered, you know, and they just represent statistics, you know, for the colonial authorities. Even though African people still tried to maintain degrees of their agency, the general framework was one of colonialism. So in that sense, the, the image could be considered a violent image. I don't see violence in the image as a whole. I see an element of mistrust in this person's eyes, maybe. On the other hand, it feels as if they're being forced into a corner, forced to be something. So the violence in it, I think it's sort of stripping them of their individuality and then just, you know, them being, becoming a number, not a human being and a person. Yes, I mean, it conveys the structural violence of colonialism. Undoubtedly, and and for me, it really, really raises the issues about um, the actual nature of European colonization of Africa, and and the fact that these, um, I mean, what we see as the Mangamizi, you know, the the the, the the African Holocaust, you know, this is, these images convey, you know, that. And what is actually disturbing is the, the, the fact that there has, you know, as far as I know until now, there has not been an attempt to bring these things into the open for a critical look. that seems quite kind ironically I, I wouldn't have thought I would have felt that way but he, he has there's a kindness everything about him just looks very colonial and um, stiff upper lip kind of character clearly to me there's somebody who took his job seriously who who seemed to be conscious of the future importance of what he was doing I think was a genuine human being. I think he, um, to be there and to have spent a lot of time um, covering um, his subject. I don't think he covered them with detachment at all. I mean, all right, you know, maybe perhaps the way you would maybe study an insect population or something like this. I think he was genuinely involved in the lives of the people. I actually see a bit, a bit of myself in him because trying to do what hasn't been done trying to collect, because I'm a hoarder, so the volume of work he's done shows that he's a hoarder as well. So picking things, even if he doesn't quite know what use it will be, but just in case it comes in useful. I, I am struck by the fact that he has a questioning view of whatever he was doing. And, and that brings those questions to us. Any recording, any documentation of our people, African people, from my perspective as an African woman, is important because much of our history has been um, subjugated, it has been um, maligned, it has been buried, it has been distorted. So even though um, 
one could perhaps say that the general context within which these pictures were taken was one of violence. Absolutely. I still think the fact that we have these images, the fact that we know these people existed, um, that they would have had their own histories, um, their own journeys, they leave behind traces, they bring, they leave behind memories, they leave behind, if you like, clues into whole worlds and whole communities, whole civilizations and whole histories and, and contributions to, to knowledge um, that I think that we can learn from. They have the ability to disrupt, which is good, I think. Um, they do have the ability to create dialogue and narrative and conversation. But then at the same time, it doesn't really move anything forward. It's not a new conversation. It's not a new dialogue. And I think it would de depend on how they're being used as to whether or not and how they can disrupt the current conversation or the lack of current conversation about colonialism and race and the concept of race and, yeah, politics of people. It gives us an insight of what life was like then. And I believe the, the point where my people are at the moment, they need to go back before they can go forward. If, if one is able to study in depth and find out a bit more about photographs, find out a bit more about what was written, find out a bit more about the recordings, um, uh, the recordings are very important as well because um, you hear the people speaking the language. <laughs> And, and when, you, when you look at the optimism that some of them exude, you know, that is even far more powerful because, you know, it, in, in that it shows that you may be actually, you may have us in a situation, you know, of the moment, which shows the, an overpowering of who we are, but we haven't quite given up our power and we express it even in the way we look, in the way we dress, you know, and more importantly, the messages we pass to all of humanity of the future.